Yo, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Growing Otaku Council podcast. It is episode 92, where for this week, we're going to be discussing the major highlights from Anime Expo 2024, as well as our Undead Unluck Season 1 review, everybody. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to join the council. The council is now in session, everybody. Let the meeting begin. All right. Welcome back, everybody, for another week of anime. Hope everybody's doing great. McMillian, hope you're doing great as well. Why don't you go ahead and hit everybody with the council announcements? Uh, yes, yes, sir. All right, so council announcements for today. I uh, just would like to remind everyone, our last uh, recorded main episode was uh, Demon Slayer and Mushoku Tensei uh, season finale reviews. We also talked a lot about the uh, news in regards to the Demon Slayer movie trilogy being announced. Um, as well as um, next up for council announcements, uh, just like to let you all know, Ace is continuing his One Piece uh, reviews with 11.11 um, coming here soon and 11.12 uh, to be followed right after. So Yes, 11.12 uh, should be out by the time you guys are here in this recording, actually. So both 11.11 and 11.12 should be out. All right. All right. And then uh, for our agenda for today, um, as Ace so graciously said in the beginning, uh, anime Expo Dump Day is uh, what this episode is primarily going to be about. Uh, so, you know, get ready for us to talk a lot about um, upcoming news. The hype is real this time if you have been following up. But if not, you know, you're about to get all that news now. Um, after that, we'll be t giving you our thoughts on Undead Unluck Season 1 um, as we have caught up to that. And then rounding out the episode with our weekly re recommendation and then, you know, standard outro. So hope you guys enjoy the episode. Yep, 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 baby. Because we, we, we coming to you live first. Today's episode, the feature topic, <laughs> baby. GOC news, the Anime Expo edition. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, um, as McMillan just said, yes, it is the Anime Expo dump. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, but, you know, we're going to try and make this fun and enjoyable, you know, as we go through all the news. Well, not maybe all the news here, but uh, all the major highlights, if you were from Anime Expo, you know, share some stuff with you guys, you know, talk about what was going on, you know, what's going to be happening, you know, in the future anime verse here, right? So, um, we're going to start us off with some 2B Hero X news, everybody. So, if, if you all remember, this is that new chinese animation right mm -hmm. um i can't remember the name of the studio but it is a the show is going to be about um superheroes and we finally got some more um news related to the show right so they, essentially they one they showed the first episode at anime expo so it's been yep. tons of you know hype and excitement over that so i'm glad to hear about that um, but some of the new um, information that we did get revealed from that was the little bit about the power system. And so apparently the heroes work off like a little trust system, essentially. Um, the more people that trust in you, the more powerful um, that you'll become. Kind of almost like some Goku give your image energy type shit. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, specifically they say like number of followers and the ones that trust them to have that will increase their strength and power level. So it seems very interesting that like each hero works off that system. I'm wondering, like, obviously, from the trailer, it looks like people have different abilities, but it's all interesting. It's interesting that it's all tied to that intrinsic trust and stuff like that. But um, beyond that, the basically reports from like Anime Expo is like this series is very hype and high octane type of action, and yes. just is there nonstop. So uh, I mean, which the trailer kind of showed because it yes. was very I'm much just about to say super almost. Colorful. For yeah, only super colorful, but I almost forgot to mention that, you know, one of the major attractions for this show is, is going to be a mix of 2D animation as well as 3D animation. So, oh, yeah, um, it's right. going to be both, you know, mix a little, a, a new mixed style of both. So it's going to be interesting to see. And like you said, the, like he just mentioned, the trailer kind of also shows off that new style as well between the 2D and, you know, the 3D animation that they're trying to go for here. Yep. yep. So that's how we got for 2B Hero X. Um, also from the Anime Expo. Um, we heard find we heard more about Periot's uh second studio. So as they said before, this is going to be like a focus on more how was it dynamic animation. So they did decide to call the second studio Periot Films. Um, and the quote from their little talking point about it is uh, this brand new studio has the model of make anime that wows. Uh, Periot stated that it will continue to work closely with Periot Films. So there's a plan for both of these studio, regular Periot Studios and their film division to work very much so simultaneously and together. 
um the quote exactly is to bring the best anime to bring the best out of each other and ever evolving in tandem to deliver the highest quality anime to the world so um, sounds great yeah period is they're, they're trying to move up so they are this is also the same studio that has taken over the production for bleach thousand year blood war so core three and core four will be handled by this new um studio at period mm-hmm. uh speaking and speaking of bleach news uh there's a slew of game announcements that came from out of this so um one of them is uh bleach got a new game called rebirth of souls uh it's gonna be a 3d arena fighting game um, and Bandai Nankai Entertainment uh, described the game as focusing sp- on the sword fighting inherent to the series. Um, the game it will be available for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, and uh, PC via Steam. Um, the game story is supposed to take place from the beginning of the series to the Iran car arc. So, um, you know, be on the lookout okay, for okay. that. I-, I think this is like the second time they've tried in Arena Fighter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm very interested to see what will come out of this one. There's a trailer for it. If you all are interested in checking it out, it does seem, yeah. it does look good. I'm really interested by the quote of, it's going to focus on the sword fighting that's in Harry yes. yes. Because that's, it's just, that's just a very interesting stance Ex- to take. Yes. You know? If they actually do like some cool mechanics where like, you know, just blade clashing mechanics and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that'll be dope as hell. And just also just to, you know, get, just make sure make this feel like a bleach game right make me feel like i'm in the bleach phrase i don't think we had it's been a decent i, I haven't heard it i know we had that one we talked about that recent bleach um that other bleach game right but that's like more of a rpg turn-based yeah. type situation mm-hmm. that was going on um and i believe there was one other 3d bleach game i don't remember yeah too that much was about it it was a while another ago. one out there yeah it was a while um ago, but I, you know the anime industry and the anime gaming part right for us anime gaming fans we have been waiting for a good anime game fighting game right that has historically not been dragon ball z right (laughs) (laughs) yeah that feels like it fits Uh uh-huh yeah, that just feels like it actually fits this verse. So hopefully both then Impact and this new Bleach game, especially since um Bandai Namco's doing that, you know, they they're coming off of, you know, developing Sparking Zero and that looks phenomenal as well. Yeah. You know, so hopefully they can take, you know, stuff they learned from developing Sparking Zero to this new Bleach game as well. So um I I'm excited for it. I'm I'm definitely excited for it. Yeah, same, same. Um and then right after that, uh with the continuing the gaming news, uh Sir Online factored Fractured Daydream uh, is a new game that's coming from the Star Alliance universe. Uh, it has an uh, English subtitle story trailer that just came out, um, and it's going to have a worldwide launch on October 4th, uh, servicing the Switch, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and as well as a PC um, launch. And the game in Japan is going to launch on October 3rd, but as you know, international dateline stuff, it's gonna come out every, it seems like it's going to come out all at the same time. So. Listen, they be throwing out the SAA go at games, SA, SAO games like they call a duty. I'm telling you, they really they be, they be pushing these mugs out. <laughs> they be pushing these bad boys out. Um, mm-hmm. Next up for gaming, we got um, the reveal of a Goblin Slayer game called Another Adventure Nightmares Feast. And it's going to be premiering on launching rather on Switch on, on October 25th. All right. Yeah. It's going to be a RPG. Um, yeah. RPG, turn based RPG. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it's very interesting because I did not expect. I was telling Ace before we started. I was like, I did not expect a Goblin Slayer game, but <laughs> if it's good, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, so look forward to that. And um, also from some interesting gaming news, uh, Madoka Magica is uh, getting a game called Magia Exerta. Uh, it looks to be some type of like it's a it's a it's for mobile but it's also seeming for steam and it looks to be somewhat actionable like when i first saw the trailer i think online i thought it was gonna be a new season but it's a, it turns out to be a game uh it looks like it could be very fun um is it a gotcha it de- i'm not sure quite yet honestly uh because it doesn't show gotcha elements but it does show like multiple different characters so it could very well be gotcha especially since it's only offered on it looks like mobile and pc which yeah again my you know would diminish my excitement for it but hey uh madoka magica is getting a game and i know there's a big fan base for them so hopefully it uh is everything you guys want in that regard 
All right. Um, also, you know, you also showed off the new Attack on Titan VR game at Anime Expo as well. The early release begins on July 23 on the MetaQuest platform as well as any pro VR hisses. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting to choose Attack on Titan for a VR game. I just feel like besides the motion sickness, do I really want to be face to face with the Titan? <laughs> Realistically. <laughs> um and then after that are rounding out the gaming news uh for our general news segment um dragon ball sparking zero was present at anime expo that people were yeah. able to play it so for those who are looking uh, yeah so for those who are looking for um you know more footage for for the game uh you know be on lookout because i'm pretty sure uh, people probably could upload it's some stuff from there and as well as plenty like, of footage you should be able to find online yeah. plenty of new footage um, probably from you know one of your favorite <laughs> fighting was, you, you, probably, yeah fighting game YouTubers and, and all that. It, so definitely go check you know go on YouTube and you know, look up some new footage. Yeah, and I was about to say, and if there's no footage, I'm pretty sure they're talking about how the game felt and played and all that other stuff. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But um, last but not least, to round this off here for general news, uh, Crunchyroll is hosting a concert for popular uh, po uh you know J-pop idol Lisa, uh, who is going to be working in tandem, I guess, with One Piece um mm -hmm. for this and it's going to be hosted at comic-con in san diego on uh july 26th and 27th um the philharmonic orchestra will also be joining her so sounds like it's going to be a big event um come this comic -Con. all right all right so for anybody in the la area it looks like y'all get to go enjoy some you know beautiful sounds from lisa mm-hmm but all right, everybody. So moving on to some new series announcements that I know our, our boy McMillian over here is has been head over heels. He has been waiting I'll on this one. Him. He has been he has been you know he, he's praised for days like this. The <laughs> <like this. laughs> oh. yeah. So uh, basic the omnipotent reader, omnipotent popular reader. manga is mm -hmm. getting a TV adaptation. Everybody. So yes. I'm gonna hand it off to McMillian from here. So he can go ahead and fanboy of it, one of his favorite manhwa series. Yeah, so there's three manhwas, three manhwas that I really fuck with that uh, that need ad anime adaptations, and two of them so far I've gotten. All right, Soul Leveling and this. And for me, you know, everybody talk about how good Soul Leveling is, but this shit right here, this shit right here, <laughs> this the shit that people that people are gonna want to watch when it comes out because my God, is this a good ass story? Um. Crunchyroll is basically, they're going to be the ones in charge of it, um, which I'm excited for, but also a little bit, a little bit worrisome because th what they did with uh, God of High School, but hey, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we go the soul leveling and the Tower of God go, route. Go, to, go that route, I feel <laughs> <Yeah. you. laughs> Um, But it's going to be offered in a lot of bunch of different places, North America, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa, Oceania, Middle East. Basically, Crunchyroll is bringing this everywhere and, and, and Aniplex is involved with the production which Aniplex. is just you know chef's kiss Aniplex bring back 86 and we'd be amazing we'd be golden <laughs> you know we'll be chilling in you know once y'all bring back 86 we, we'll, we can ride off to the sunset at that point exactly 86 no matter of fact Aniplex announced 86 season two and my life is yours <laughs> yeah, exactly and my life is yours <laughs> but regardless if you're if you have not heard of this manga um you should definitely check it a if you want to read before it comes out check it out but b um def I, I as a person who's reading it it is my stamp of approval this is going to be a really good series when it comes out if they go if they are stay dedicated to the source material it's all really right good. well y'all know how we do it on this podcast here everybody we're gonna have to believe it when we see it <laughs> mcmillan has put his stamp on it he has vouched for it everybody so y'all know what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna believe and trust in him <laughs> and we gonna trust it. He only as so far. He only got one, just one, just one miss, <laughs> just one. <laughs> Other than that, I one time I ain't <laughs> never seen this man miss. I ain't never seen him miss. So, um, at, at, just like all the other times, we are gonna put our trust and faith in our boy, and we are gonna patiently wait along with him mm -hmm. for the arrival of once again an omnis uh, omnipotent, omniscient. <laughs> Omniscient. Omniscient. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm a little dyslexic. It's okay. <laughs> um, 
but moving off of there the rick and morty anime they showed they debuted a new trailer for the rick and morty anime is going to also be premiering on august the 15th the show looks good it looks interesting um me personally i haven't checked out all the seasons of rick and morty i have watched like the very first season of rick and morty mm -hmm. um just having like just continued the rest of it but um the trailer for the anime does look pretty decent now some will say don't I will, I will agree no the, i guess the, the art style that they go for you know yeah <laughs> It might turn some people off, but yeah. I, but you know at this point it is what it is, right? I think, so well with them, you know, how, for those who watch Rick and Morty, it's very comedic and stuff like that. I'm wondering if they're just using that art style to kind of you know throw back old anime, make it a little bit like kind of a spoof of that type of style. Maybe. So, yeah, I, I'm thinking that's where it's going. But yeah, if you're excited for if you're a Rick and Morty fan, the anime will be debuting on August the 15th. So you look forward to that. Yep. Um, another uh, for another new series, uh, the Beastar creator uh, has another manga called Sonata, and it has been announced that uh, to be getting a TV anime um, that's coming that's going to be produced by Science Saru uh, Productions. So be on the lookout for that for if you're a Beastars fan, um, be, uh, because I'm pretty sure from what it sounds like, this is also another popular series of hers. So look out for that. Okay. Um, okay. But some more. All right. But some more uh, Macmillan, uh, f a series that should be hyped up. Ubel Blot uh, it, it got an edit that got a trailer and uh, it was announced for Winter 2025 premiere. Um, and as well as that, besides just the anime, uh, Yen Press is going to release uh, releasing omnibuses for the series. For those, you know, if you have not read it or weren't able to get the first run of the manga, uh, do not be do not fret because uh, special editions are coming. Um, this is another series that I really enjoyed. It's a seinen um, action fantasy type of story. Really good. I think a lot of people will enjoy it when it comes out. Um, and we don't have that long to wait because technically, you know, winter season is technically, I guess, like tw just two more away. <laughs> so <laughs> technically, you know, is is right around the corner. corner right? Yeah. Cause... Well, we got fall left. Uh, yeah, yeah, fall, and then after that, it's winter season for next year. So. Yeah. Uh, be on the lookout for that one. All right. Well, moving off of there, everybody. So from the creators for the same studio that brought you Trigun, Stampede, as well as B Stars, another studio. There we go, B Stars, because they also did that as well. B Stars that he just got done talking about. The same <laughs> studio. They're also they're gonna be coming out with a new anime project. Um, they're gonna be coming to Netflix as well called Leviathan. This move, this anime is gonna be based off a light novel by a create the creator. Oh, it's not a light Scott. novel. It's a, it's is an American novel. Yeah, it's an American not like a American, American novel. novel. There we yeah. go. There we go. An American novel. It is mm -hmm. also a trilogy. But the name the the author of this story is called Scott Whisfield. Um, it is a classic. I wouldn't say classic, but but I guess <laughs> you would say an alternate version mm -hmm. of World War One. Yeah, yeah, it's an alternate no, version I'm of World like War One. I'm like, what am I saying? Classic. <laughs> yeah, it's an alternate version of, I guess, real world of the real world. Um, instead of like, obviously, like the historical retellings of World War One, this takes place in a steampunk inspired world, um, that has mechas, and it's good. So it seems like Studio Orange and Netflix are producing this uh, anime based off of the trilogy of books, and they're planning, from what it looks like, to adapt the whole trilogy um okay. into like a anime series so uh if you're familiar with the see if the the novels um you know let let people know is this something people should be excited for i thought it was interesting just because besides outside of anime expo never heard of this never heard of this project until right now but from what people are saying uh that went to the panel uh that this was in it is like this is studios orange this was their like focus basically okay. from their whole panel so i'm assuming this is supposed to be something really big um mm -hmm. but i just i'm just not familiar with the series so if this is something we should yeah, be hyped, hyped about readers of the books let us know because <laughs> it looks cool but i just yeah. you know i'm just not that much aware of it <laughs> yep as well as i'm um, speaking of trigon stampede as well everybody a an, uh, just surprising sequel got announced everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> um trigon the final phase has you know got revealed and is going to be set two and a half years after trigon stampede um but doesn't have a release date or a release window just yet but yeah. um it was you know we got the sequel was announced yeah it's called the title we have a title of it it's called trigon stargaze 
but other than the fact that it's happening two and a half years later uh and i think we also have like a little teaser if i'm not mistaken it was on uh twitter they showed a little yeah just a little teaser, teaser. with the name of the title mm-hmm. and um that's, ba- that's basically all we got but i really enjoyed stampede so i'm really looking forward to see like what this will be um so yeah uh, just be on the lookout for that trigon fans Yep, as well in um more witch hat Lear, witch hat at Lear news. Everybody they showed off a brand new trailer, and once again, you know this anime is gonna be premiering in winter twenty twenty five as well. Well, no, not winter twenty twenty five. Right now, it's just twenty twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, be on look have an official release date. This but another, this is another McMillian yeah. recommendation mm-hmm. though. And the art, oh, they the they doing it justice for anybody who's read the manga. The trailer looks. Hey, listen, that, that trailer looks nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna hold you. I'm not gonna hold you. That yeah, trailer the, looks nice. One of the things the manga is known for is its art style, and from what it looks like from the trailer, they're doing it justice. So, <laughs> all right, and then we're gonna end off new series here, everybody, with a interesting announcement, mm-hmm. everybody. So the Mobile Suit Gundam series, they have created a how do i put this it's an all vr film only they they call it the first ever animated full fully animated vr film and it's going to be coming to the meta quest um series as well and yep. this fall right mm-hmm. yes, yeah this fall. Uh, this fall uh it has a fall debut and it's supposed to be set for those who keep up with the gundam timelines there's a lot of them it's gonna be set in the universal century uh oh uh double o 96 uh timeline i i am not i love gundam i'm not that familiar with the timelines but for for some of you i'm pretty sure it's probably exciting news regardless i i I just think it's really interesting that this is gonna be a fully vr film yes Um, i think that's hella interesting yeah and i mean to do it in a mecca but i will say hey give credit where credit is due to do it in a mecca series i think it's probably like the smartest way to do a vr film because to be to have shots probably of you of like the viewer first person <laughs> flying a mech, I think it's just really, really cool. I yeah. So. Um. So the once again the name of the film is called Silver Phantom, but the in the trailer showed it, it, the the trailer talks about how you're gonna be the you you actually are the protagonist. So you know you're you're looking at the movies from the eyes of the protagonist, right? So you know you get up close shots of everybody and all the scenes and everything like that, right? Um, so I just thought that was cool, but yeah, just like you said, like you said, just a fully featured VR film. That's kind of that's just kind of dope. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Now, huh, the probably the most packed <laughs> of our news section. Um, we have future releases, so we're gonna try and go through these quickly, and then at the end, we'll probably give you like our, you know, discuss some of the our fav- detailed our thoughts yeah. on uh, these announcements. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess I'll start it off. Um, so for our future releases, uh, we have the English dub of shot for shy season two, um, which the regular that uh, was the sub just started, I think like a couple of days mm-hmm. ago when we, from recording this, um, mm-hmm. well, it'll start streaming on July 15th. That's uh, for English dub for the English dub enjoyers. You can expect it on July 15th. Uh, after that, we have rent a girlfriend, um, Got an announcement of its fourth season coming in 2025. Not specific uh, what season of 2025, just 2025. After that, uh, Morty already the Patriot. Um, the manga returns with the second part on December 4th. Um, after that, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 3, The Conflict, uh, is revealed to be coming out in October. Um, yep. There is a trailer and the opening ending theme uh, songs and, key, and a new key visual is revealed. Yep. Um, Moving on from there, everybody, the Crunchyroll um, Crunch is said to stream the uh, second season of Ap- Apothecary Diaries. Um, mm-hmm. So that's cool. Is That's going to be debuting in two, 2025, as well as the season two of Blue Lock that's going to be premiering on October 25th. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for that. And then the long awaited season three of Final Force, F- Fire Force, not Final Force. I don't know where that <laughs> came from. Fire Force, everybody, was announced. And that's going to be premiering on April 25th with a a um, two core that they're going to be doing and the second core is going to be premiering on January 2026 and then heading on from there everybody the final season of Dr. Stone was also announced everybody's going to be coming to Crunchyroll um, the science future is going to be streaming on Crunchyroll we don't have a release date for it yet but we just got the announcement for it mm-hmm. yep uh, after that we have is it wrong to try pick up girls in the dungeon season 5 
the goddess harvest the goddess of the harvest arc uh is going to be premiering in this fall season uh my hero academia uh your next film is supposed to be coming to the u.s theaters on october 11th uh the film is going to open in japan on august 2nd so uh be you know aware or wary of uh potential spoilers from the film please please <laughs> uh black butler uh was announced to get a new arc called the emerald witch arc uh is going to be premiering on uh 2025 uh after that shangri-la frontier season two got a teaser um which announced that it's coming back on october 13th it will also have two cores just like the last one so it's gonna be it's gonna we're gonna be getting even more uh Ooh, the we go be we go be <laughs> that's phenomenal and say yo fans rise up for as gun gale online 2 is going to be premiering in october everybody so can't wait for that um solo leveling season 2 was also announced everybody a new teaser was showing off during the Exp anime expo um that's going to be premiering i, think it's supposed I to come don't know if we year. have a yeah sometime it, next year yeah i was gonna say if i'm not mistaken it's next year but we uh yeah the teaser looks nice uh yes, after that uh well no you already talked about it a little bit but uh sword Art online gun gale uh coming back yes. um this october uh, rounded off and then we rounded off the rapid fire with blue exorcist beyond the snow arc and new some new visuals for that was showing off that's going to be premiering in january 2025 oh no october. my, apolog my apologies <laughs> it's going to be october 2024 and then the next saga after that which they also announced is going to be premiering in january 2025 my apologies everybody yeah. <laughs> and then everybody probably my favorite announcement here link click season three showing off got shown off a brand new trailer that's gonna become premiering in winter 2024 here no what i guess 2025. winter 2025 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. winter 2025 i mis mistyped it winter 2025 premiere here um <sighs> <laughs> what? i'm gonna start there all link right click season three I, <laughs> I don't we've sung the praises of link click a few times on this podcast now if you haven't yet watched it this is your 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 few, many psas we have already given you to go check out link click you can find it on crunch road it is a phenomenal show about um two best friends who have time traveling powers and they use their powers to help out people within their neighborhood i want to say yeah. yeah yeah within so, their neighborhood yeah. Yeah, some people come with them with requests to basically help them relive certain moments or events and get closure slash some other stuff. Uh, and it, it, or it, help them remember something from a certain yeah. event. Like, because sometimes they be, they're like looking for a certain piece of information, so they'll hire them to do detective work to find out like a certain type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's really really cool. Like, it, this is like one of the coolest shows where I've seen them do the like the plot, uh, like how they do their plot twist with time traveling and all that. It's hella cool, right? Yeah, Just yeah. Season, yeah, the difference between season one and season two is really cool because you get this. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but there's a big mystery basically in season two um that they have to deal with so i would uh, basically if you haven't seen it go check it out i can't we can't sing the praises of the show enough uh and i'm really excited that it's getting a season three it definitely deserved it yeah um excuse me next up fire force oh my god fire force fire force <laughs> I, <sighs> It's, it's been what a almost going on to make going on it has to be going on at least two years since the season three announcement big, right I, yeah i must say it, Close it, to, it, two it, or three, i know like, it's not two years since the announcement but it just feels like at least been eight years since the announcement i know that yeah, for a fact it's been a while <laughs> oh everything good is yes my oh my wife scared the hell out of me yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> i guess she came back over her lunch break she was tapping on my door and I was like, who the fuck? I was like, what do, what <laughs> God, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes, Fire Force, man. I, uh, season three, they have officially, no, come on official say this will be the final season of Fire Force. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see the conclusion of Fire Force. Um, yeah, I, you know, I do I want to talk about this? What? About the... I'll leave it alone because maybe a lot of people don't know about that, so it could be spoiler for some other people. So I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Okay. Um, but yes, Fire Force season three, everybody, the final season, can't wait for it. Take it yeah, away. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of sucks. I was, I was gonna say it kind of sucks that we have to wait until 
2025 for it but i am yeah but i am super excited because as we talked about before them the manga finished like a while ago so i'm really excited to see just how much they're about to like pour in to like the series because mm-hmm. if this is about to be the final season i feel like we're going to get it for a while um be- at least 24 episodes right yeah at least, I, was, right? I would imagine i'd imagine especially since they're doing two separate cores gotta be at least you know 24 episodes right so, yeah and fire force had such an amazing animation i cannot wait i cannot <laughs> wait to see what crazy shit we're about to see when it finally does come back even though it's gonna be a while but i it's gonna be dope oh man yeah it, it's gonna be dope but um speaking of some uh, another announcement season two of shangri-la frontier i'm hella glad we did not have to wait long for season two of this i'm surprised we was gonna because what season one ended oh wait, no it's probably been about a year because i believe season one came out season last one? fall yeah but it ended at the beginning of this year so. yeah. yeah 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 that's what it was because they did a they did two cores so mm-hmm. yeah so they bring it back in again in fall so i guess like a year time frame it wasn't really that long a few, a few it, couple of months really not even a whole year just a couple of months yeah but it's nice to know that we're getting it for just as long as probably we got season one because like, yes I I was really surprised that like we were getting it for that long and then to find out that season two is just going to be probably just as long is just really nice. nice yes. Yeah, so nice th- we, we already mentioned it before, but just going to reiterate it again. Season two is said to have two cores just like season one. So hopefully like McMillan, you just said a, a full feature length season of 24 episodes, just like we got for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it also looked like we're going to be fighting um, like a gun in this second um, season at some point as well because they showed off that that you know him and that little teaser mm-hmm. I'm excited for this like I said to me um, unfortunately you know Shangri-La Frontier especially if the at the pace it has it keeps going like this is it has dethroned, dethroned SAO as the best MMO anime all right mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. blank period now, <laughs> point I mean, blank period now with that being said though I am really excited for Gun Gale Online I Oh, I, yes i very much enjoy like i i know i'm like the S- resident sao hater on this podcast <laughs> but gun, but the alternative gun gale online story i really enjoyed the first season and so i'm really looking forward to see what they bring with this season two because it's been such a long time um from season one i feel like season one came out like middle well, i was in college that's so like at least like 10 almost what i want to say like six years since the first since the first season potentially like it, it, it this is about to be a really interesting time to like bring this back but i'm cannot i could not be any more excited for it yes yes and then just to run for me just to run out the discussion here um nice to see that seven deadly sins the fortnite apocalypse did get a second season announced i haven't checked out the first season yeah, yet but we, it's just great to see that a season two was announced yeah we've been meaning to go back and watch that too because we wanted to review it but it's been yes. it, so much good shit has been coming out this year um <laughs> yes yeah but we definitely got to get around to watching the first season of it because I've, I've heard good things uh about four nights of the apocalypse and i cannot uh wait to see what like what it ha- just has in store and the fact that it's like, continuing is very nice yes and then of course you know bleach dies your blood war cannot wait for the continuation of that um this is going to be the second to last core core four is going to be the final core so mm-hmm. you know everybody get ready for the end here um because we're we're, we're rounding out to it everybody um, but yeah, we we'll also just want to reiterate um, for the core three and core four here, uh, the production of Bleach That's Your Blood War has moved over to the new studio Parrot, um, Parrot Films, Films Productions. Yep. As McMillian has already stated, they're aiming to make some of the best anime in the world. Is mm-hmm. what no, that's what they that's what they said. Their words, not mine. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> they, they to, their words, yeah. <laughs> their words, not mine. Um, me personally, I, I thought that the, both the first and second core already had amazing animation. So just to hear that they're trying to up the ante for the la- the last two cores is just amazing. Yeah, especially with where we left off in core two, like in like the what the second part. I am really looking forward to like what they're going to do to improve upon that because i i yeah a I, I sorry said it, it they'd already had stellar so like what the fuck the, what's after stellar <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah looking forward to that and um but just real quick i just want to say like blue lock season two coming out this year is really great oh yeah um i told a so actually it was funny a little bit after we talked about like how well the see the nagi movie was doing in theaters i just mm-hmm. randomly decided to go watch it and i and i really enjoyed it uh if you like basically season one i mean this is just a retelling from nagi's point of view but they okay. added some they definitely some upped, extra stuff here yeah they definitely upped and they 
definitely like up the animation and stuff like that from like obviously it's a film so they did that yeah. um so if you haven't gone and checked it out and you like blue lock i definitely would recommend going to see it in theaters show your support for it but i'm really excited after watching the film mm-hmm. very much excited for season two because it just it. reminded me why i liked blue lock so much so okay really excited beautiful. for the fall to come here beautiful beautiful then you know we're gonna stay we're gonna end it off with this last film topic then here to since you already stayed started with that right um how are you? How are how are excited are you for the your next film, the My Hero film? I'm interested to see it only because like, um, I I like the My Hero films. They're really good. Uh, I mean, granted, I don't <laughs> I don't like the fact that they're all canon because I definitely don't think. Uh, <laughs> has that been it? true? Is is the creator they're came all, out and said that, that they they're are, canon? They like are, I know they're all canon. They are they're all, canon in terms of like characters and stuff but i didn't know they're all canon people saying apparently. they're canon in terms of like actual events like these they, they have technically they actually happened. apparently they have technically all happened um the ma- and the people that have confirmed this are the manga readers because certain things pop up in the manga that are from the films after they like already happened like um was it the first film apparently i guess we'll get it at some point like this season but mm-hmm. like uh the girl like all Might's goddaughter basically mm-hmm. or does something within like this current arc uh, at some point so uh they are technically canon they talk about some of the stuff that has happened in the films apparently in the series moving forward so like they're they are apparently canon now granted i this this is one this is interesting to me that fact because this movie is coming out so close to the end of the of the manga, yeah, so like, and is then it's this also one? supposed to be like a story about like an evil all might. Like, as yeah, well. so I'm just so like, like, how is this? One? <laughs> you mean is, during during the most time of I turmoil, can... all might got taken? <laughs> yeah, from somebody mind controlled this man, and he went on a rampage. Yeah, like. which is just very interesting because uh, I can see how the first movie and the third movie are canon, but if you're telling me the second and this film are. I, I got I got issues. <laughs> okay, my boy said I need show me the timeline, show me the my hero timeline. I, I, was like, I got issues because yeah, <laughs> but I'm I'm interested to see what the, like how well this film will do because like I said I think the yeah they all they've all been entertaining they've all been good yeah, watches. I, I was just so. about to say that I was just but I was just about to say that all the my hero films have been um great to watch to some extent they have been in, in it very entertainful and entertainful. Um, so I am excited for this fourth one. I, like you said, I, I didn't know about that whole canon, you know, piece of information right there. Um, I'm with you on that one. How does how does this whole dark, you know, yeah, all might how got, that yeah, how does this whole dark all all might fit into the whole story now? Everything, but I think it's still cool though, right? Yeah. Uh, this, so with that being said, this should be probably one of the most action packed out of the movies, right? If we're think... going to be facing dealing with all might, <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited for it. Yep. I'm excited for it. But yeah, um, that is the end of GOC news, everybody. So before we head on to our next topic, we're going to, we're going to be giving out this week's weekly recommendation. Oh, uh, well, yes, true. But before that, um, just going to give you guys another message from our good friends over at magic mind. Um, recently, because I had to travel back home, I did technically restart my challenge. I'm back on like one day. Um, and all I like to say is again, Magic Mind it does a great job of boosting that uh, that focus, that alertness um, that we keep talking about. It is like I said, a mental performance shot that gives you, you know, your needed uh, what I say doses of vitamins and stuff like that. It's, like I said, it's all natural, so you don't have to worry about like getting the jitters or anything like that when you do drink an energy drink or things of that nature. So um, if you're interested in any of that, you know, please check out our deal. Uh, but I, I'll pass off to and before I give you guys the information, I'll like pass off to Ace so he can talk about some of his experience with Magic Mind because I know he technically continued oh. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have been continued with the challenge as well. Um, just on on and off here and there. But every time I have used it, it I I. I have said this before. I'm a believer now, right? <laughs> Every time I take this energy drink, I have a great day of, of, produ- of productivity. Helps me stay very focused because I am, I, I found myself being one of those people who, um, it's hard to stay on topic. I realize, <laughs> but definitely whenever I pop one of these, um, in mental 
performance boost and drinks from by our friends here at Make Jemani definitely helps me focus for the day and you know gets me going. Um, like like today for example, I don't woke up today early on and got this reaction video done. Um, about to do the discussion here. But hey, we're recording this episode uh -huh. <laughs> now. Like I'm having a very productive day. I'm like I can feel it. I'm energized. I'm ready to go, man. Yeah. So if you guys want to you know join us on this challenge or even try out Magic Mind for yourself, please you know. Consider using, uh, you know, going to the magicmind.com website slash Otaku Council uh, to get your deal. Uh, uh, you know, first subscription, uh, you'll get 48% off. And if you're doing like a one time purchase, you'll get 20% off using the same deal. Uh, if you go to the regular magicmind.com website, you can also use our code Otaku Council 20 at checkout to get the same, you know, percentages off. Uh, but, you know, if you want to go directly, uh, magicmind.com slash Otaku Council will get you those same deals without having to use the code. But, um, you know, thank you again, Magic Mind, for sponsoring the podcast and, you know, allowing us to tell our audience about this wonderful product. Uh, hopefully you all, you know, decide to check it out. Yes. But, um, all right. And this week's rec weekly recommendation to everybody is Claymore. Mm -hmm. Take it away, McMillian. Yeah. So for those who don't know, this is an older series. It came out like somewhere in the mid 2000s, but it's really good. It's a seining. Um, but basically, like synopsis is, uh, like most shows that appeared in the 2000s, uh, this is about uh, demons, basically. Um, these shape-shifting creatures called Yoma who attack uh, human villages, and the only people who can stop them are these half-monster, half-human hybrids known as claymores. Um, this, the story focuses on a specific one. Um, her name is Claire. And uh, one day, uh, she arrives in a boy's village. Uh, the boy's name is Rocky. And he ends up, she ends up saving his life. But because Rocky's family was the people that turned out to be Clay, uh, sorry, that turned out to be Yoma, his village throws him out. So he basically ends up traveling with Claire um, while she goes on her journey. And there's a lot of mystery shout or, well, Surrounding Claire's uh, life because she t essentially became a Claymore to get revenge on a specific person. But I'll let you guys watch the series to figure that out. Um, who that is? Uh, the season it ha Claymore has one season, consists of twenty six episodes. Uh, it's subbed and dubbed in multiple languages. Now, if you do decide to check out the series, I will say it does not have a definitive end as an anime, and that's because it follows up the manga to a certain point, and then it kind of just like does its own thing if you're if you want to watch it i highly recommend it it's still a really good series but i would also recommend after you're finishing it you're reading the uh, manga um potentially like either start from the beginning or look up where a good point is to jump in um but like for instance right now i'm actually going through and going through the manga and finishing it stories a, ph a phenomenal i'm it's really crazy that it, they decided to just end it where they did um, I hope it, it's another one that needs an FMAB treatment, to be quite honest with you. But um, yeah, no, good, great series, great action. It is adult. I would not recommend watching this with children. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, Claymore is this week's weekly recommendation. I uh, hope you guys check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please let me know how you thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Don't watch it with children. Do everybody. not. I, I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> And it's not even because it's like etchy or anything. It's just really violent. Like I would not, I just wouldn't watch it with kids. I'd probably give them nightmares. <laughs> it's like, but well, it's, it's, it's like berserk. Probably, I'd probably <laughs> the kids to that. You don't want to put that in front of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, McMillian, thank you for thank you for that. Once again, everybody, this week's weekly recommendation is Claymore. Go and check it out. Um, but I'm going to be heading into our last discussion for today, everybody. Our Undead Unluck Season 1 review. And if you have already checked out Season 1, let us know down below in the comments. What are you guys' thoughts? Um, But, you know, let's go ahead and get to it, though. So, Undead Unluck. Undead Unluck. Um, where do... Where do where do I even <laughs> begin with this show? Right. Um, okay. So let's start here. Right. Mm -hmm. It took me a minute to, you know, finally get around to watching it, but I did watch. It. I will say overall, I did enjoy it. I didn't hate it. So I, I guess, I guess I'll say that, but why is this man? Please put some clothes on this man. <laughs> I just, I just don't understand 
I because it's I would say it's not like this is the only show that does this, mm-hmm. right? Is this this is the only show that does this? But I never understood the whole run. But this is um, but th- I would say this is one of the shows that takes us a little bit to more on the a little bit more extreme side of things well, with this gag, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've never understood this one. I me personally, I never really enjoyed it that much. But put some clothes on this man. I don't. Why am I watching a naked man run around twenty four seven? Uh, the the store would still be just as great if this man has closed it. I don't understand him being naked d- doesn't add to his character in my opinion. In my humble opinion, I mean the only thing it does is to show that he really ain't got no like shame or anything like that. I, I, I guess like, but I, at two aces point, it, it, I I do I would agree. I did enjoy the series. Um, I did talk about. I think re, uh, we did talk about this shortly. I think when it first came out. Um. But like I had a, I originally when it was like getting really popular, I tried to get into the manga, and one of the things that was throwing me off was Andy himself. Um, so <laughs> I already just to give you an idea, like of my thoughts on it. But like, yeah, I I also thought the series was good. Um, I really like the concept of it too, to be quite yes. honest. Like, yes, a whole bunch of people who have powers that go against the laws of the natural world. I that yeah, really cool, really cool concept. Really cool, because I mean, hey, let's even let's let's talk about Indy for a second, right? His whole regeneration powers is just the way they work. I, I really like that. Like, this is a classic. Not going to say a classic, but this is a spin on regeneration's powers. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think anybody's really done it like this. Like, this man can essentially regenerate from any body part and make multiple clones from any body parts. Like, you've never really seen that from a regeneration power before, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's cool. Yes, and it's and I was like, you know what? You know, as concept of of use, I could definitely see how this would work. Um, it's definitely like an OP version of, like, regeneration, but it... I, yeah, like, using his body parts, shooting them off and stuff mm-hmm. as, like, little rockets and missiles, that's cool. You know, shooting off his fingers and stuff, little missiles, like, that's cool. Like, the way he uses regeneration powers, I like it. That's very, in, like, I, very, very um unique, if Yeah, you will. and very, like, in very inventive ways of using, I think, everybody's powers. Like, uh, was it that one girl whose thing was unchanged, I think? And, like, it was basically, the way she uh, did it was she had invisible force fields that she could create that like kept the state of things uh if you oh yeah yeah, that yeah. was the, the girl the girl they had to the, take out to in the get, first arc yeah the mm-hmm. one they had to take out to get to the gig to get their seat on the round table mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah that yeah. like her that was interesting because i was just like when you think un- of like unchangeable stuff you don't necessarily think of like force fields a la like invisible woman but like i really liked how they did how they made her thing and how like it all worked it was really yeah inventive so. Yeah, yeah, but um, back to the concept of the story, if you will, or I guess the whole plot, right? So I do like that as well. Um, so the plot revolves around essentially, you know, our main characters grouping together with the the uh, heroes of the story. They call the union. At first, we thought those bad guys, but it turns out they're the heroes, right? Mm-hmm. Called the union. Um, they team up with the union, and long story short, they're trying to rebel against God because God has everybody stuck in has everybody stuck in a time loop, but in during every time loop, um, some stuff can be different. Like so here, certain events happen differently, but for the most part, um, everything stays the same. But just here and there, certain di- certain you no know, certain stuff are different from timeline to timeline, right? But yeah. majority of the major events are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, re- really cool. Um, not you know nothing we have seen before, right? At like a the other Earth or just the whole time loop situation, or that that isn't nothing new. But just I think the way they're doing it, what with this with God being the main enemy is um is is what the plot twist is right yeah and I guess that that's the interesting factor um how do you feel about that I thought that was I, like I said I thought that was really interesting like that as a whole is just really cool and the fact of like the way it's presented is like they are fighting against like the natural forces because they themselves go against like the natural laws and yeah. in a way like it's a blessing and a curse they're just like you know this is our powers have caused a lot of harm to like our loved ones in our past and lives and stuff like that. And we want that to stop. But also at the same time, we're only able to do these amazing things because of those abilities. Like I, I like yeah. the, the catch 22 of it all. Um, so it, it, like I said, it's really cool. Um, premise just, you know, give Andy some pants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably my biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's really cool uh, story arc and n- really nice plot twist. 
All right. So before I talk about one of my favorite, I guess my favorite arc of the season, um, I want to ask about how do you feel about the power system of the show, right? So, you know, essentially the power system, at least how I look at it, right? Um, I call it rules, if you will. So okay. um, in, in this world, um, we have UMAs who are like embodiments of rules, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then we have negators who are people who have, who gain abilities to negate rules. Yeah. In certain um, forms of fashions. Yeah, in certain forms of fashion. Here comes my dog busting in here like he pays bills, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have um, UMAs, once again, who are the embodiments of rules. And then you have negators who are the people who are... Uh, who who can negate rules, right? They have they get they get a rule, and whether they they rule is rule is normally negating a certain aspect of that rule, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I thought is kind of cool. It also looks like for whatever reason, every negator is like has a horrible life, and almost at least Basically. from what we've seen so far, almost every negator done killed their parents as well in some kind of crazy um event due to their powers. Yeah. Yeah basically uh in sub form or fashion the worst one probably to me gotta be um was unmove or uh i think it's unmove if i'm not mistaken uh, I, the, yeah, I can't I believe, I believe it is unmove but yeah but the guy who who makes people not move when he looks at them mm-hmm. and stuff that because that that one, oh my god <laughs> that, that, yeah <laughs> Yeah, because at first I thought it was like a time stop thing, but okay, no, it's not time stopping. He's not stopping time. time. He's actually just, just stopping, stopping the people, whatever object he has visuals on. Mm-hmm. And because it works on inanimate objects as well as um living organic ones, yeah. objects. Yes, organic objects as well. Yeah. So that was ooh, <laughs> that was rough. But yeah, uh, basically every uh, like I mean, like I said before, that's why they want to go against guys because they all kind of. It's just, they their ex, their existence itself is a challenge, and yeah. people really shouldn't be living like that. Is their whole thing. Um, and then I also think just the the fact of like how the union, like how they interact with the world, and like they decide like which which rules get added and which rules don't get added and stuff like that. I thought that was cool as hell. So like for example, um, they added a rule to like where they unified every, the the entire world's language. Like that's yeah. So everybody <laughs> crazy. So everybody. <laughs> Everybody except negators. Negators, yes. Uh, speak English. That's like every. That's the thing. And so then, every. But then, like, it actually plays a part in the story, mm-hmm. right? So now negators are easily identifiable because n- no majority of them aren't out there speaking English. So it's like, oh, who, what you know? What is this guy speaking? Like, we don't. What are you? You over here speaking gibberish, my guy? Like, what are you? What are you talking? Like, stop playing. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was cool as well. Like, that's that's dope. Yeah, that was that 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 exactly that like one part. Uh, that was actually led. I think that led into my favorite arc from like the show was like right before the end when they uh, recruited Unmoved because I was just like I didn't understand at first like what that meant. I was like, this that just means everybody, everybody, whatever you say gets translated into English, and then that yeah. wasn't exactly the case. So I was like, oh no, shit, everybody <laughs> speaks English now. <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> speaks English, which means if you speak in something else, they're good, not gonna understand you. Which I was like, all right, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then like the creation of the galaxy, like in it, like they created the galaxy during like, this time loop. And in everything. my head, <laughs> and as a person who lives in a world where get where galaxy is not a new concept i was like what i was like why is that bad and then i'm like oh so they so before this earth only yeah. existed. okay <laughs> got it I, I was i get it i get it <laughs> i get i understand now like okay like uh, th- this uh, this would you know be bad then it, yeah then extraterrestrials and start coming like okay yeah like yeah this yeah this is impending doom this is d-day you know aliens actually coming to invade the earth yeah this is classic d-day okay mm-hmm, got mm-hmm. it got it all right Okay, I'm seeing the vision. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but then it was just crazy old girl being strong enough to say, hey, my man said, on this day, <laughs> Earth made contact for a- with aliens for the first and last time. time. <laughs> Un- Unjustice's ability is so interesting to me because it's like... Un- uh, you go against whatever your yeah, system whatever justice your is. Yeah, whatever your system justice is, which I'm just like, that is such a small... A small ability, little detail that, because it, like but, what if somebody doesn't have a sense of justice right but i guess whatever but i guess that's still the, but the, I think, the play on it whatever your sense of belief is yeah. that's what she counts as your justice yeah your sense right? of what is right 
Yes. Basically, it gets flipped on its head, which I'm just like, that is such an interesting ability because it can make it can easily make like a friend a foe or a foe a friend, right? And the fact, yeah. and I'm good. I'm just glad she can choose when to use it because I was just like, to do that uh, automatically would be crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Oh, uh, let me before I because I, I haven't been looking at the docket. I apologize. I've just been rambling. <laughs> <laughs> so give me one second, just make sure I'm not I mean, you've missing touched, anything from you've, the docket. You've touched on the, uh, quite a few good, I think, part of the points that I wrote down. Okay. Oh, so I do want to ask a qu- I do want to ask you a question. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been because been th- I've been thinking about this. At what point did did the series really pull you in? I think for me, it was like I said, it was probably after the first. Uh, oh, when Victor showed up, I think it's probably like when it really pulled me in. It's probably okay. Like- the zombie arc. Yeah, Big, that's what I was about to Big say. Door. Probably right around that, so, that time. Because yeah. the beginning of the zombie arc, I wasn't really like, I was like, eh, I mean, like, this is cool, but like, I wasn't really like all that into it. But as it kind of progressed, I was like, okay, I'm starting to understand what UMAs are and like what, mm-hmm. like how this organization works. And then Victor popped out and I was like, oh, what the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Okay, yeah, I, I feel. Yeah, I think that was right around the time where I, where it started pulling me in as well. Me, I will say this before I go too far because I didn't. I I hated this. The, whatever red filter they put on like the Victor episode when he first got revealed for that fight against the Union. Please stop it. That was <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah, that I, was that was stupid. I remember that. I wasn't that big of a fan of that either, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, I don't. I don't know what who made who was in charge of production to say yes for this entire episode. We're gonna put a red filter over everything to make it just look like bloodied and you know dangerous and everything. Right? I guess that's the feel they was going for. But yeah, no, nah, I wasn't that. I wasn't that big of a fan of it either. I I completely nah, understand. It, that was a it, that was a miss. That that was a miss. That was a miss. The episode did not need that. Maybe if you, okay, you pulled it off here and there, but for the entire thing, the entire episode, we just watching it. it we just watching it from this lens of a red filter. Why? Like, I, mm-hmm. I thought that was odd to me. It was just odd stylistic choice to me in my in my opinion. Um, but Victor, right? I I lo- okay. Okay, so let's talk about this, right? Mm-hmm. I, I I enjoy this because it's almost like a classic inner demon style type of thing that's going on. But he's the original person. How do you, how do you, t- yeah. how do you not give this man his own body back? back? Yeah. So that 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 was to me. I, I didn't think of it like from the inner demon's perspective, but I did think about it from like. So usually in in was in shows people who have amnesia or whatever like they don't it's not like this it's usually like oh i just forgot who i used to be or something yeah. like that or like the split personality or like or i see to to example the inner demon thing who the the fucking guy the regular person is in charge the whole time it's the second personality that is hidden away but in it they yes. spun it and put it on his head where andy yes Andy's in charge, and the original motherfucker is locked up. Is the one that's put away. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I'm just like that is such an interesting concept. That I really feel like more shows should do because I'm just like, damn, <laughs> like the only because it's like okay, like like you said, like Victor's like they're supposed to be this quote unquote bad, but you know, as we start learning more about him, it's like okay, you, he's really I, oh, not I get it. that bad. Exactly, like, I'm like I get it. He's still like doing stuff his way, but like still at the same time. How do you tell this man? Like, okay, yes, I understand. Because I do agree with you. Maybe we, he he does need to be sealed away, mm-hmm. right? Maybe he don't need to be out here running around, right? But this that is this man's body. Right, exactly. How do you say you have the right to this man's body? Like, the moral the moral quandary. <laughs> like, what <yeah>. the fuck? <laughs> and I mean, like, it, it, that's why I'm like, it, this is such an interesting thing because, like, the only other the only other series that I know that kind of does this. Oh, I you know what? I don't even know if I can mention it because it's a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> if you've seen Tokyo Ghoul Re, you know what I'm talking about. That's all I could say. <laughs> yeah, that's all I could say because this is the only other series where I really know that they do that they do something like this. But I, yeah, it's, it was it's such an like, interesting story storytelling standpoint because like yes, because you're how, supposed to root against him. But how am I? I how do I get mad at somebody for wanting to take back their own body? Their body. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to get mad at that? 
It's. I was about to say. It, it's. It, it, he didn't give it away. It, it, it's. It's like I'm. I'm. I'm in here the whole time. It's just I'm sealed because of the wedge this in my brain. That came yeah. from. We still don't know. I thought we was gonna get the explanation of how Andy came to be. We still did. They still holding out on this for that. So yeah, it's okay. It's, you know. I guess we we still got at least some secrets. I understand. It's hinted. Um, I'm like it's hinted that Justine that uh was it Justine might have done girl, something. Yeah, done but, something to him. Yeah, but we it's not confirmed. So I'm really not sure. Um, but yeah, that it, it, that's a very interesting moral thing because it's like I, I mean, yes, he's a he's dangerous, very much so. But like at the same time, that is that's him. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> like, that's his body. <laughs> like I don't. Uh, this is the was the way we went about seeing it was. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just take over this man. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be the Orochimaru. I'm gonna do the Orochimaru mm-hmm. this time. You gonna go away? <laughs> like, Orochi- we it, oh, oh, Orochimaru strikes again. <laughs> he strikes again. He strikes again. I mean, but this time it's a split personality, so it's not fully. But yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was I thought that was a very unique and interesting fact you know, on on the plane like how they was doing stuff as well. Cause it's like like you already mentioned, just like he is bad. Yes, he should be locked up to some extent, right? But like, that's that man body though. Like <laughs> how you gonna tell him he can't live exactly. in his own body? He's like, how you gonna stop me from <laughs> At that point, you might as well just would have killed, just killed him and reincarnated to his body or something. I don't know, just take it like that. But like this man is still alive in there. Like I don't, yeah. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> I'm on your side, but I'm not on your side, Andy. Exactly. Like I don't. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Andy, but at the same time, like mm, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right, but I will say I believe. The favorite arc for me from season one was definitely the Artem arc. The way they told the story of the writer of the To You From Me. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. When I tell you I shedded a tear for that final episode. Fantastic. fantastic yeah, the way the great. way they did this storytelling was phenomenal. I love this. I, I loved everything about that. His whole the whole back his whole backstory to be, you know, his from from him to gain into his negated powers, you know, now everybody can't see me. Damn, how do I still interact with the world? Oh, I can write manga and still, you know, let people hear my voice. Oh snap, I know the end of the world. How do I let everybody know about what's gonna go on? I can't just tell them what's happening without because if I tell them what's just gonna happen, it's still not gonna change it. I have to I have to do something then just uh, it's crazy. Just all the, it was just amazing. It was amazing. It was yeah. Crazy. No, that last yeah, that last arc was really nice. That last arc was really nice. I think my favorite would probably have to be the one prior to that though, just because I really liked, um, I really liked just like how the how it's pointed out with all the fact that negators don't speak English. So that's a way to identify them, and then just the the arrival of a second organization that's against the union was really cool yeah. as well. Like that was just it was just very fun. That season that arc was just really fun to me. And I'm just like, this is the type of shit that I see that I feel like got everybody <laughs> hooked on this series. Cause this was just really this is just really fun. <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. Well yeah, no, the the storytelling from the auto arc is got it for me. Yeah, no, I mean that, was that was phenomenal. great. I, that was great. I really liked that one too because that had such implications on like the where this could go, right? So I, yeah, I'm looking for. I'll say this: like, I'm looking for if this does could get a season two. I'm looking forward to see what they where where it goes, like beyond mm-hmm. this, because this is a very interesting like point. I feel like in a story to be at where like you technically know what you need, like you know what you need to do. do. Yeah, and, but also at the same time, if you don't do it, you know how it's going to end, right? Yeah, because. And then the main key that we got now is that we um unlucks powers are adapting, right? Um, so now her unlucks are starting to adapt to the person who she's putting the unluck on. So you know the unluck is being built for that person now instead of just some random event. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool to see that the negator abilities can grow. I mean, technically we've already known that because of Andy and yeah. other people, but like and Victor because of Andy and Victor. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this right. was the yeah, the to see hers evolve was really cool as well. So 
Yeah, that was cool. Um, before we head out of here, favorite character, man, from this first season. Talk to Ooh, me. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Talk to me. That's hard. I, I probably I think I might have to go with um I can't remember his name, but un, un Is it the blind guy? Unrepair. Oh yeah, I was about to say unrepair, yeah. Unrepair, just because I just he, he was fun. Like when he first showed up, I was like, "Okay, this is badass." Turned to a kid, and he was just very funny to me because I was just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and then I found out that he's like a was it like a tortured character in a way because he wanted to be like this hero type person, but then he found out like that this wasn't really in the cards for him, and they gave him faith that it could be again. And I was like, "All right, I, this is just classic." To me, like this type of shit right here. <laughs> yeah, because because he wants to save a love when he thinks to um to achieve that he has to go the route of being a villain, so he doesn't want to be a hero because he doesn't think he can achieve his goal that way as well. Mm-hmm. So it's also kind of messing with that as well because it's not like he doesn't want to necessarily be good. It's just that he doesn't think that's gonna help him achieve his goals. Oh, yep. Indeed. So yeah, I like I like that as well. Um, yeah, I'm prepared for school. I don't remember his name, but old guy with the blue hair. I, I believe I had to give it to him. Is that unstoppable? Or am I thinking mm-hmm. of a different That person? was a fast guy, right? Yeah. Did he have blue hair? Absolutely unstoppable. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought he had blue hair. I might be wrong. No, but yeah, no, the guy with the blue hair, he, 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 this was the guy who was basically the um the Dragon Ball Z parody, right? You know, he had the Nibbles cloud and he had the, oh! the pole. I know what you're talking about. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Untruth? Is that his name? Is that his ability? I can't remember his name right because now. Because but... basically you do the opposite of whatever you want to do. Want to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought that... I, but he was fun. Because I, I thought it was another like restraining type of negating ability that he was doing. But then when he explained that, I was like, oh, snap. I would have never guessed yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like I said, the way they do powers in the show in the, in the the show is really inventive. Like that's probably my favorite aspect of Undead Unluck is the way they go about using their abilities is super inventive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell, a hundred percent, hundred percent. But all right, um, bef- is there anything else on the docket that we didn't touch upon that you want to touch on before we rate this season? Uh no, I think we hit everything. Yeah, I think we got everything out the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see the question. Um, did the series disappoint you? I, I already talked about. I talked about that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, my only disappointment is just me Andy's whole gag, in my opinion. Um, just I just, just don't think it's needed. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think, I, it, maybe it's the age I'm at, I don't, I don't think it's funny. <laughs> like, I'm just, ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, like, uh, it's happening again. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, other than that gag, the series is enjoyable. Oh. I love the plot and concept behind it. And I do think the powers, the powers, both the powers and the power system are both unique and fun as well. Mm. So, um. Definitely, definitely. Let's go ahead and rate this then. Season one. Season one of Undead Unluck. I would give it a smooth seven, right? Um, okay. I think it started off a bit slow, but definitely picks up around like eight-ish, nine-ish. Like you said, that's right around the time when Victor gets revealed. Um, Not to say there still won't, you know, there wasn't good moments before, you know, that happened because of course you know why would you be watching a show if <laughs> right? happen, but yeah. um just think it was a little little slow build up but definitely after we got to round eight nine when victor first got revealed it we were just off it was just we were just off to the races from there because then you know we was getting lore dumps here and there expositions you know like you said new rival group got revealed and everything all got god damn it billy turned on this oh he's the head of the um uh, the other group as well the like, crazy oh ass ability too wild ability uh, got another kakashi out here <laughs> basically yeah so uh yeah i probably um yeah probably seven as well like i was thinking like seven seven and a half that's kind of where i was leading towards because like i said that's when it's when the series is good it's really yeah, oh, it's rolling it's yeah, rolling like yeah. but there are moments um where like it's really slow or it's not as interesting as i feel like it could have been like where it kind of like certain stuff like I don't know. Like, I guess it gets jumbled or messy. Maybe, like, slows down where I feel like it could, if they just did a little bit, like, took, weren't, well, let's say, hmm, 
I think if they were a little bit more intentional with some of the stuff, I feel like it could have been better. But like some of the transitions in between like seasons, yeah. they kind of like great. They, they great like a little bit. Like I'm it, just like, mm, it, I don't know if y'all should have done it, that. But and then now that I'm thinking about it, I think another reason why I don't like the whole gag situation that we got going on with Andy is because it's really just being used as fan service at this point. And then sometimes during the moments or how they do it, it's just like, like you said, it just, just disrupts the flow of the episode sometimes. It, some, at least to me. Yeah. All right. Um, but. No, because it's, uh, the way I look at it, or like what uh, bothers me, like they'll get moments where Andy and Fuka are having, are like really sincere. Yeah. And then that, and then the, the fucking gag happens. And I'm just like, this bothers me <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like like i'm just like it's not a it's not funny and b like it, it just doesn't feel it feels out of place like there was one I, there was one time where i thought the gag worked and that was probably like after what when fuka killed when fuka quote-unquote killed victor and andy came back and he was like no she was and he wanted a kiss and she was like i already kissed you but it was victor and he was like no no i want it for me <laughs> like that was the one time where I was like, okay, that was funny. Like, but other every other time I'm just like, this just feels awkward. <laughs> so yeah, and then maybe another time was like we got introduced to the UMA clothes, right? Mm -hmm. I think oh, it was, that I think yeah, the see, way that that, yeah. that also worked well, right? But like every other time, it's it, like it's not to the level I think of bad, like as Fire Force's character. Um, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I was just about to say that. It's yes. not, it's, it's not, not that it's not bad. on Fire Force's character. But it, it's not, it's not Fire Force level. What, what's her name? Um, oh, I can't even remember her name right now, but the, we all know this certain character. It's not that levels of bad, right? Yeah, but it does. Even though, from the, even though Fire Force is still a phenomenal show, but she does <laughs> slow the show a lot. She that, in, she's that one there. glaring thing. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Andy's stuff doesn't get that bad, but it does, it, 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 it's, it's it's still like a issue to me. Now some people it's probably funny. Uh and you might not even have an issue with it. So like but it does bring down the series a little bit for me. Because that yeah. How, okay, I guess I'll cause we've almost forgot about this. How do you feel about Andy's and Foucault's relationship then? I guess. Do you find it believable? Like there are, I guess at all. There are moments where I do, but there are also like there like I said, like um I think when for instance, a good example, when Fuka made Fuka or Fuka yeah, Fuko, I think it is. Fuko made the manga and Andy was like mm -hmm. supporting her. I was like, this mm -hmm. makes me believe yeah. that they actually could be a couple. And or when they got like dressed for the um the ball the for ball. the ownership yeah. for the mm -hmm. for the black market. That, that mm -hmm. also was a like relationship type moment, like and it was poking fun at them in that regard. Fuko, yeah. But, but, Fuko, but Andy was trying to encourage Fuko to be um you no know, encourage of you know not be as scared to you know just you know show show off if you will. Yeah like that felt like those moments felt like good and even like the whole their whole interaction I think during that arc on the ship was like a good thing to show that they have a good relationship and it could lead to romantic stuff. But like every time Andy being weird it just drops the it, it just drops it lower for me because I'm just like some of his stuff is like romantic funny, but a lot of it mm -hmm. is more creep. Like I don't know. <laughs> 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 so like, because if you were doing that shit, you lose you lose the you losing the girl fast <laughs> as fuck. Like there's no. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so. I, I feel you. When when it's when they're not trying to do too much, yes, it's a believable relationship. It's even like sweet, but Andy, you know, tone it down. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Tone it down. Tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> Get it together here, though. I feel you. Okay, okay. All right. I just wanted to see what what was your what was your thoughts on you know the, their whole dynamic, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, not their whole dynamic, just the relationship part of their dynamic. Yeah, because I like I think that's probably what bothered me. And when I tried to read, because I was just like, I don't see why she would like a person like this at all. Like, but as the show, but I could get into the show probably a bit more because I think like we, it, it felt more dynamic in there and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, I got to see beyond that. I'm like, OK, I can see how this works. But mm -hmm. like I said, Andy, he'd be doing too much sometimes. I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <I, I, I." laughs> Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. I'm with you there, 100%.
A hundred percent. You know, some 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 gags need to be retired. But I like you say it may be an age thing at this point though. Yeah. <laughs> But all right, everybody, that is the end of today's episode. Yo, you know, let us know down below in the comments what you guys thought of Undead Unluck Season 1. You know, if there's anything in the season that um, that we didn't talk about from Season 1. You know, I'll, you feel like we're misrepresenting your favorite series. <laughs> um, you know, let us know. Let us know down below in the comments. But with all that being said, everybody, McMillan, why don't you go ahead and take us on out of here? Yep. As always, guys, appreciate you for watching this last listen. If you want to stay up to date on all things about the council, please consider following us on our social media. That is at Gurren Otakus on Twitter and at Gurren Otaku Council everywhere else. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, consider hitting that like and subscribe button as well as, you know, hit the bell notification so you can stay up to date on when we release new stuff. Um, we really appreciate it. And if you're listening to us on our audio only platforms, um, you know, consider following uh, uh, the podcast so you can stay up to date on new releases, as well as uh, leaving a review. We greatly appreciate it, as well as, uh, you know, sharing for in any platform. Uh, share us with your friends and family uh, that they like anime and stuff like that. We greatly appreciate, you know, new eyes coming in and, uh, you know, watching us. Uh, it helps us grow. But um, with all that being said, guys, uh, fall season is now here. Uh, hope you guys find some new and j- great shows. Uh, Tower of God is back. It already has a great start, in my opinion. So go ahead and check that out. But um, this is Gurno Talking Council saying meeting adjourned. Peace out, everybody. Did I stay?